to point with, and it could, in this case, it could be the cone. And you want the A and B on top. Yeah. Um, let me tighten that a little bit more, and then actually can pull the buckle around to the back so it doesn't get in your way. Yeah, that's probably fine. And I'm just going to give it a quick comb between where the cards are and where we're going to tie it. I'm going to have you scoot back a little bit. Now, the chairs with the wheels on it are probably not the best ones to use because it moves. Um, what is the only one that I Yeah, let's get that. Yes. Yeah, swap out with this one. That's a good one. Good. You guys save those sitting. And you don't weigh enough. <laughs> Alright, so I've got to come down right up to where I'm going to tie it on. And let's see, you're playing short, so it's down a little low. And I'm just going to wrap this around a couple of times. And then. Wrap it around this a couple of times. Pull it through. Trying to keep it not too tangled. You're going to have to keep combing as you go along. But um, the main thing is to just make it so that it's easy to untie, but it will stay tight. Okay? Because you got to be able to put it around something. All right. Now, these rubber bands we're going to have to cut off. All right, just got scissors. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to show you. Actually, we might be able to just move them up here. Ideally, let me get, um, all right, you hold that. Let me get you another rubber band. Whenever you're not actually using the card, be sure you put a rubber band. And corner to corner makes it real easy to put on and put off. And it, I would use two if possible. There, I have more on the table, you guys. Help yourselves. All right, now, this has to stay tight. Okay, while you're working tighter than that, so back up. And you use your body to adjust the tightness. All right? And we're going to... Move them a little bit forward, and you notice that there's this opening. Does anybody remember what that's called? Four-letter word? Any learning happened when I showed you the first time? <laughs> All right, it's called the shed. All right, does that sound familiar? Do you recognize that word? All right, so, and this, do you remember what this is? Shuttle. Shuttle, okay. Most of these shuttles have a tapered edge and a fatter edge. And you want the tapered edge towards you because it's sort of like a knife blade that you're going to use to pack down. So we're going to just pass that through, leave a tail hanging, and I'm going to just lay this here for a moment. A and B are on top to start. You're going to take your cards and turn them one quarter turn away from you. No matter what you start with, does it have to be away from you? Yeah, always start away from you. That's a good question, actually. And we're going to set up the pencil pointing away from, from her. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is reach in with my fingers right along the edge of the card there, which is the largest part of the opening. Spread these back with my finger first, and then put the shuttle in, tapered side towards you. Two hands, press that in place, then pull this through, okay? You want to pull it through. The first part is going to look a mess, and you can actually take it out when you're done if you want to. It's just serving to sort of separate the threads and line them up. So the first inch or so, forget about it. It's just getting started. But then start being careful about this edge. You don't want little loops left showing. Go ahead and turn this another quarter turn away from you. And once you turn, you probably want to do something like this. 
and slide it to sort of comb it, and that frees the threads up and makes your, um, makes your thing. So put your fingers in and spread it back. Find the shed. Put the shed with your finger. Spread it back. Then put the shuttle through. Pack it down. Two hands. Pack it down. Pack it down. Really hard. Hard as you can. And then bring it the rest of the way through. And adjust your edge. So you have a big loop there. And then turn the cards another quarter of a turn. Away. We're still going away. It'll get less awkward very soon. <laughs> you said like this? Is kind of I do it like this. Everybody sort of has to figure out their own way. I do it this way so that there's no chance of some of the cards turning and some of them not turning. Just if you squeeze them in while you're doing it, they won't move. So you have to. The reason I do it like this is because it allows them to relax a little bit, and that puts some space and lets them move. But if you, if you try to do it like this, they're not going to move. All right. So go ahead and spread it, and then pack it down. Bring it through. Always use two hands on the shuttle so that you don't get it angled. This is going to look nice. Um, yeah, give it a little extra tug here. Cause see, see that big loop there? I don't know if you can see it or not, but right there is a big loop. We're going to want to pull it tighter through. And one more turn away from you. I'm going to upload this one to YouTube if you guys want me to just like give you a link. That would be great. My battery died. That would be awesome. You guys are too cool. <laughs> it's already on YouTube. <laughs> that was 37 seconds ago. It's on live. Okay. Let me send this to you. <laughs> already sent it. Okay, now, A and B are on top. That's your signal to switch directions, all right? So now you start doing the same thing, but going back the other way. Now, one thing before you do that I want to point out. You can already see that her design is making little Vs. So what you might want to do, and that actually is exactly what your design is doing, but you might want to make a notation, and I would just go like this. Four forward as just a note to yourself that if you get lost or stuck, if you lose, break your concentration and you say, well, am I going forward or back? What am I supposed to do? You can look at it and get a clue and say, well, it looks like I've already just gone four forward. So now I must be, let's see, I must be ready to go four backwards, okay? You gotta use your brain, and use your eyes, and sort of, you know, find the clues <coughs> and problem solve. All right. So, you ready? Go ahead and do a couple more. And now, her design, which is going this way, will probably start going this way for the four backwards. Okay. So, where, where is, how do you know the four forward and four backwards? Are you following these arrows? Right no, now? we're done with this all together. Okay, we're done with this. Okay, done with this. And I should say, your design on your actual weaving may have very little resemblance to this. Right? Don't be surprised. It just happens sometimes. Um, this is just a sort of a rough guide, a general idea of what you should get. It doesn't always match up. Okay. Sometimes it matches more on one side than the other. But um, don't let it throw you. Alright? You ready to continue? Yeah? Now back. 
So how do you know again to when you're going forwards and backwards? When the A and B get on top, it's time to switch. When the A and B get on top? Mm -hmm. So her A and B's were on top, but now she's starting to turn so, back So down. when the A's and B's are uh, just like this, yep. that's how you know to go backwards. Once you, wrote, once you start rotating. And then when they're on top again, it's time you start to go going forward. Back, go forward. Okay, okay, okay. So the sequence that I'm asking you to do is four forward and four back, four forward and four back. And I'm asking you to restrain yourself to that sequence. Okay. Just keep an eye on the edges. If you check your grade sheet that you got with this, Everybody got a grade sheet, right? One of the things I'm looking for is, do you have nice, straight, even edges? I'm also looking for a consistent pattern, right? And so just check your grade sheet to make sure that you're getting all the things that you gotta do. Any questions? Got it? You think you can do it? <laughs>